Hi, I'm Rebecca Mueller, and this is Biking News for Thursday, November 1st, 2001. Thanks for joining us for our ninth show of the year. SEMA students and athletes have had a great first quarter of the year. To start off, the Viking Marching Band has provided Viking fans with some awesome performances during halftime this season. Also, the football team finished this season undefeated and with a top 10 ranking in the state. The volleyball and cross country teams ended their seasons with great performances at state as well. For more information on the speedy cross country teams, let's go to Brett Hamilton. The Seaman cross country teams ran last weekend at State Race on the Rimrock Farm in Lawrence. The Seaman girls finished ninth after a pack of Vikings that clung near the leader's pack for the first mile slipped and ran out of gas. Senior Jessica Barron, a consistent runner through her career, made a top 20, top 20 position throughout the race before finishing a strong 22nd. Liz Ray and Allie Johnson paced each other and finished 51st and 52nd respectively. Pretty good season, but our state outcome, our state finish, we were disappointed in that. But all together we had a pretty good season. Although we were a little bit disappointed in our finish at the state meet, uh, and taking ninth and kind of feeling like we ought to be in the top five, uh, we did have a good race out of Ashley Guston. She's our runner of the week this week. And uh, at the end of the season, we had uh, Jessica Barron was an all-city uh, selection from the Capital Journal, as well as uh, Allie Johnson uh, was an all-city selection. So we did have some good things happen, uh, and we had a good season. In the 5A boys race, Seaman finished 7th and were led by senior Tyler McClellan, 11th place finish in 1726. Senior Josh Woodard was 34th in at 1803. This season we ran, we ran pretty strong throughout the season. At at Lee, we our teams actually came together and we ran pretty strong, but we didn't get anything together at regional or state. And the Vike cross country teams had a great season. Congratulations. Thanks, Brett, and congr and congratulations to both the boys and girls cross country teams. Now with the regular season completed, the Viking football team has one thing on their mind, a state championship. With a talented team and a great coaching staff, they have the opportunity to win it all. Let's go to quarterback Chris Carlson with the story. SEMA got just about everything it wanted from its 43-8 victory over Highland Park last Friday night. The Vikings got their undefeated season, believed to be the first in the school's history since the early 1950s. They got the district title, their third straight, and their first Centennial League title since 1995. More important, they kept everyone healthy for the playoffs that begin Friday in Johnson County at St. Thomas Aquinas. A pair of defensive touchdowns helped lift the Vikings to a 30-0 halftime lead. Matt Kimsey got the first four plays into the game when he stripped Park's tailback Aaron Neal and returned the fumble 42 yards for a touchdown. Steve DeForest got the second after teammate Brandon Adams tipped Neal's halfback pass into his hands. DeForest raced 51 yards and put Seaman up 23-0. Well, it helped a lot when uh, the offense wasn't moving the ball too well. The defense got two scores in that first half that helped out a lot. And then that helped our offense by getting the momentum to them, and they started moving the ball well in the second half. Seaman ran only 20 offensive plays in taking its 23-0 lead. Their play count stood only at 25 after Kyle Edwards broke loose for a 56-yard dash and a 30-0 lead. That margin was so commanding that Coach Bill Lowe, after his team recovered a fourth Scots fumble to accompany the interception on the, on the park 35 with 32 seconds and all three timeouts remaining, elected to let the clock expire after one dive play. The Seaman defense was in charge for most of the game. Highland Park only managed one score on a one-yard run by Highland Park tailback Aaron Neal. Lowe played his subs extensively in the second half and they responded with two scoring drives. Sophomore quarterback Lewis Huffless rushed for 72 yards, nudging Edwards by a yard for the team honors, as the Vikes ran for 247 yards as a team. Uh, obviously, we were pleased with the outcome, 43-8. Um, you can never uh, be displeased with that. Uh, the thing we were not as pleased with, though, is we could have played a lot better than we did, and uh, offensively especially, uh, but the defense uh, luckily came to play, and. We pulled out the victory. Um, for next week's game, we're working this week on just trying to get better, uh, especially up front, and we want to work on dominating uh, physically um, the entire game, both on offense and defense. 
The Vikings will start postseason play Friday at St. Thomas Aquinas, a team that seemed defeated 13-0 in this season's first game. Let's all go and support our Vikings. Thanks, Chris. Good luck to the players and coaches this weekend against St. Thomas Aquinas. For the past couple of years, Viking students have had the chance to build a house for Habitat for Humanity. Here's the story. Once again, the architecture construction science class is building a house for Habitat for Humanity. This class is taught by Mr. John Bloomfield and lasts the whole year. Our goal was to have our roof trusses up by homecoming and uh, we met that goal and now um, I hope that by the end of today we'll have this house shed in water and then we'll be able to go in and, and finish framing up the interior partitions and stuff like that and be able to go into our wiring and plumbing and things like that. After this house is completed, a family will be chosen based on criteria by Habitat and will be given a new house to live in at a very low cost. They should know by early next spring who the family is and will be able to meet them. Please stay tuned for upcoming events at Seaman High School.
That's all for this week. Thanks for joining us. Students, don't forget that the carnival is Friday and all proceeds go to Feed the Children. Also, this show is replayed on Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. See you later.